This is my terminal. And that are the two words that will generate for me a full API on top of my database in second. But before I can go and show you the result, let me tell you how I get there. DAB stand for Data API Builder, and it's an open source project available here. The code is there, they accept contribution on GitHub. And it's a tool that will generate different API, generate a REST API and a GraphQL API based on a single configuration file, a JSON file. So to install it, it's a tool from .NET, so you need to have .NET, and you will do .NET tool install, and you will install it globally, because it will be much simpler, Microsoft Data API Builder. After that, if you go back in your terminal, just doing dab will show you what you can do. And to get started, it's very simple. We'll use dab init and pass some parameter. So let me show you here. Here, my example for today. So I will be doing dab init and I will be passing two parameters. So the first one is my type of database. Here today, I'm using a MS SQL. You know me like I did previously in another video and I was using MySQL. So it support multiple database. It could run in a container, could run locally, could run in the cloud. It doesn't matter. The important point is the connection string. And guess what? That's exactly the next parameter I'm passing. So here you can see the connection string. So I will pass that in my terminal and it will generate for me the configuration file, like basic configuration file. We'll just go in the terminal and we'll paste this. So now the configuration is ready and it's it's suggesting me, hey, you know, you could do dab add to add entity. So we'll do that very quickly. But first, let's have a look to what was created. So we'll go back again in our file. Now, if I look, I have a dab config. And if I look here, let's close this. We'll see here a configuration file, so a, a JSON document where I explain some stuff. I will say yes, I want ref, I want GraphQL, I could apply different path into those. Uh, but right now there's nothing. I, I specify like the authorization and things like that, but there's no entities right now. So like it's an API, but with nothing. So let's add an API. And to do that, what we need to do is, let's, just like it was suggested in documentation, we do dab add, and then we'll add room, and we specify what's the source. So my source right now is a, a table called dbo.rooms, and for keep it simple for this demo, I say permission anonymous at write, read, all, all of it, just, just to keep it simple. So we'll run this, and after that, we'll look again the end packed in our file. So we'll just, let's do a quick clear screen, run, execute this command. And now I can have a look again to my configuration file. And now if we look, just a little bit smaller. If we look now, we have an entity room and I will have my object. It's a type table. I have the same thing with GraphQL. I will have REST permissions and everything. So all it's set. So now you could just like had a, a, a lot of them and you will be ready. So let me do that right now and I will get back to you in two seconds. I didn't have too much because I don't want to show like complex database. I just want to show you that it's working. So what I did just to show you something different a little bit is I also added a uh, store procedure. So get weapon manoeuvre and I'm passing a parameter and it's a store procedure here. Uh, I will have the result. Future Frank here. So when I was recording this video, I realized that I never shared the command to add that store procedure. So let me show you here. So to do that, you just do the same thing, add, and then like you specify the entity you wanna add. So here it's get weapon manoeuvre because it's a store procedure. And I'm specifying the source. So again, my store procedure, I'm specifying the type. Instead of table here, I go, guess what? Store procedure specify any parameter I'm getting in, and then the permission if I want something specific. In this case, just like before, I just specify anonymous, so anybody can do it. And instead of like read, write, or something like that, it's execute because it's 
you guessed it, a store procedure. Uh, the method is get because I'm not updating. This is a store procedure store procedure that will return a result and I'm just saying for a GraphQL operation it will be a query. So that's it. Now back to regular Frank. So now that we have a more interesting file, I just had I change a little thing here so it could be more fun for us. I set the mode to development because I want the swagger interface uh, to show you. So to start everything we go back in our terminal and we'll go dab start that's the only line that we need to do so doing this will compile generate everything and launch it so here we have it so we can have a look so if i click here i see that right now my service is healthy and if i go for example i go see api swagger index first so we can see that i have my entity room that is available and i could executed and I have my get weapon manoeuvre. So for example, if I want to see all the rooms, I could go here, I could even try it. If I execute it, I will see my results. So here are, just bring this. So here is my result. Same thing with the uh, get manoeuvre. I can execute it and I will have the result. Obviously, you can also do it in the code. So I could do local host and here we can see that I'm passing my parameter weapon ID. So if I was in in my code and postman or whatever you want to use, then you could just do this and you will receive your value. So I, it will totally work. I'm not a big GraphUL user yet, but if it's your thing, it also can get generated. Of course, you can apply multiple securities and things like that. I really believe that Data API Builder is a fantastic to tool to use. It helps us to generate a full API on top of the database and let us focus on the code. In a previous video, I show you how I create a Docker container where I put my database that is always ready because some scripts are automatically executed. In a future video, what I want to show you is how I use Data API Builder with that setup and have everything ready in one single command. Stay tuned for more. How I embed those with. Um, I think the eight. Let's do this one more time.